Hey there YouTube, Arvin69 here, and today I've got something a little bit different for you. It is not a sponsored video, and I'm not being paid to say this, but today's video is about the new NAS I have just bought recently. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see the pictures I posted. Now, the reason for the purchase is because I do currently run um, a dual NAS setup running the ReadyNAS Duo and the ReadyNAS Ultra. The Duo is my backup box, and the Ultra has been my media server and general file storage server for the YouTube videos and other bits and pieces. Now, the reason for swapping is because Plex no longer support the ReadyNAS Ultra. And being a Plex Lifetime member, I do want these updates. Also, the Ultra Box doesn't really handle Plex very well anymore. So it, I figured it was time to update and get a more modern NAS box. Hence, this one. When I did some digging about, this reckons it will handle 4K movies for Plex, um, along with transcoding and any other bits and pieces that I may chuck at my Plex media server. So before we go any further, let's have a quick look at the specifications for the QNAP TVS 951X. It has an Intel Celeron 3865 dual-core 1.8GHz processor. It has an Intel HD Graphics 610 chipset on board. And my model has 2GB of RAM, although it is uh, expandable up to 32GB maximum. And it has uh, two Sodium DDR4 dual-channel support memory slots inside. On the front, we have five 3.5-inch SATA 6 gigabits per second um, hard drive bays, and there are four 2.5 inch SATA 6 gigabit SSD drives. So the way I'm looking to set this up in the future is I've got three um, Western Digital Red 6 terabyte drives to go in now, they're brand new. I'm going to put some SSDs in later and probably see about offloading the Plex transcoding to the SSDs to speed things up a little bit. And then once I get that sorted, I might look at what else we can do with the SSDs. But anyway, um, on the back of the box, there's a 10 gigabit ethernet port and also a standard gigabit ethernet port. There's also three USB 3 ports, one on the front, two on the rear. There's one USB touch copy button, which has a USB 3 type A port on. There's a HDMI version 1.4 B port on the back, supporting 4K at 24 Hertz. And there's also a speaker and one 3.5 millimeter line out jack. And that pretty much covers the specifications of the, uh, the box itself. Now, the other reason for doing this video is when I've been digging about, there are very, very few videos showing the actual setup process of this NAS box. The hard drive installation is very, very straightforward, so that'll only take a couple of seconds. But I wanted to do a look at how I set up my NAS box and how we go from no disks to installing to fully working on the network. So let's dive into installing the disks. So unlike other NAS boxes I've had in the past, there are no screws involved on this one. All we need to do to open the bay is pull down on the tab lift up and then slide out the tray. Then on the side of the tray here, there is a black tab. We simply get hold of the side here, pull, slide across and it pops off. Do the same on the other side, pop it off on the side, slide our hand across and that comes off. And we're now left with where we would normally screw the hard drive in. But with these, we just get our hard drive, drop it into the caddy, get hold of the tab, pop it on the side, and firmly press it in place. Turn it around and redo. There we are. And that's our hard drive. Now securely mounted inside the tray and then it's just to pop it in, slide it all the way back, push down and lock it in place. Then simply repeat for drives two and three. So with the final hard drive going in, that is all three Western Digital 6 terabyte red drives installed. And now it's time to set up the NAS box. So we'll hop over to the PC and see how we do that. Now with the hard drives installed, we need to do a quick Google search for QNAP Q Pro. That will bring us to this page here. And if we scan down, we can see we can get the Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, or the Chromebook version. We've downloaded the Windows already, um, just to save a bit of time. And when we launch the software, it now finds our NAS box. If yours doesn't show in the list, simply hit refresh and it should find your NAS provided you are on the same network as the NAS box. 
Now you may get a pop-up um, asking you to do the setup. If you don't, simply double click the line and you will get this server not initialized yet. So we will hit yes. It will launch a new web page. And we can start the smart installation guide. So we can give our NAS a name. So we will call it QNAP TVS 951X. We can give uh, the admin a password. And we'll confirm it. And we're going to hit next. Next, we're asked to set the date and time of the uh, the NAS box. Our time zone is GMT, as I'm in the UK, and we'll let it synchronise with the internet automatically. You can, if you want, set it as your computer or input manually, but we're going to let it select from the internet for the uh, GMT time zone. Obtain an IP address automatically. This has got 192.168.1.253. I'm going to nip into my router and set this as a static IP address for this server as I don't want it changing. So we can hit next. Right, cross-platform file transfer services. So enable the following OS features to assist you in cross-platform file management, sharing and transfer. Multiple choices are allowed. Now Windows is already ticked as I'm running on a Windows PC. I don't have any Mac devices, but I am going to take Linux as I may be using my Android phone for this. So we'll hit next. So now we're asked to select the disk configuration. There's a brief description here of what this means, and there is a link to a tutorial that explains all the different disk configuration and storage types you can select. That will open up in a new tab. We're going to choose configure disks now. We're going to use a thick multi-volume. We want this in RAID 5. I can do JBOD, RAID 0 or RAID 5. Um, I want RAID 5 for redundancy. We're going to set the volume to maximum size. We don't want the disks uh, encrypted. And we can do a bad block scan if we want to. This will scan the disks for any bad blocks and mark them. Um, as these are new disks, we'll skip that and we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll chance it. So now we're asked if we want to set up multimedia functions. This will set up Functions to include media server, sorry, media library, DLNA server, iTunes, and more. We'll do yes, because I do know I want to use some of those. And this is a summary of everything we've set. So we've got the volume name, the username and password, the date and time, the IP address, the services installed, the disk configuration we've selected, and multimedia. Now, if we hit apply, it should start to configure the NAS box. Please confirm that you would like to proceed the disk configuration RAID 5. Warning, all data on drives will be deleted upon drive initialization. As the volumes are empty, this is fine. We'll click OK. And now this has started to initialize the volumes. Now this is going to take some time, so let's speed it up. So now it's finished initializing all the disks, etc. That took quite a while. Um, it's now setting up and starting all the services, and then we should be good to go. And there we are, the NAS is now configured and set up. So if we click go to NAS management, it will take us to our NAS where we can log in. There we are, agree to the privacy notices and so as you can see there, there's already an update available for the App Center. Get rid of that. So we'll update that. If we look in here, we can see that the NAS is online and ready. It has the right date and time. We can now start to explore our NAS and set up any files, um, services or anything else we need. Uh, that's a quick rundown of how to set up the QNAP TVS 951X. I'm assuming this setup process is similar to all current NAS um, developed and produced by QNAP. Do me a favour, if you enjoyed this video or you found it useful or helpful in any way, shape or form, please smack that thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought of the video. And if you can mash that subscribe button and ring the bell, it helps out immensely. And until next time, take care.